Okay, we are going to try and do the world's quickest synoptic chart overview. So a synoptic chart is basically giving us a summary of what's happening in the atmosphere above a particular location. So on my sample here, I've got a base map of Australia. You might be able to see that. And then over the top of the map of Australia, someone's gone and drawn all these squiggly lines. And that was the Bureau of Meteorology, and that's the source of this synoptic chart. So these lines tell us quite a lot. They tell us about air pressure, wind speed, chances of rain, and temperatures. Um, and what we are going to do is learn the cheat's guide to interpreting one of these. So the things that I've got here, I'll briefly go over verbally, but the cheat's notes you see on the screen. So we are talking about a, a summary of what's happening in the air above the land uh, at a, a specific moment in time. And keep in mind that air is always moving, so this will only last a, a short while. So the first feature um, that's not actually listed on here um, explicitly are the lines themselves. We call these isobars. And isobars just join places of equal air pressure. So any point on the same line has the same air pressure. So the unit of measurement we use for air pressure is HPA, hectopascals. So whenever you're asked about the air pressure, that's the unit of measurement that we want to include. So here are the other symbols that I need to look for on a synoptic chart, the basic ones that you might be tested on. So we need to look for a high pressure system. That's basically a parcel of air which is pushing down on the Earth's surface and creating a high pressure zone. How do I know if I'm looking for a high? Well, I see these almost concentric rings and they're often widely spaced. But the way that we definitely tell if it's a high pressure system is we look at the values and towards the center of these circles, if the values get higher towards the center, we know we're looking at a high pressure system. So on this synoptic chart here, I can see that they've actually labelled H's and L's for the highs and lows, but often in a test you won't have those there. So what you would look at is look for patterns of concentric rings almost, or patterns that look like a ring. And if we look at the values of the isobars towards the centre, if they increase or get higher, that's how we tell if we're looking at a high or low. Often highs will also have values way above 1,000, and low pressure systems will be a thousand or below. I often call these happy highs. And the reason we call them happy highs is because they bring with them some happy weather. They bring an increase in temperatures and a decrease in wind speeds and a decreased chance of rain. So that's why when we see a high, we're likely to get nice, warm, dry weather. The opposite of a high is a low pressure system. And a low pressure system is where air is rising up away from the Earth's surface. And as it does so, it becomes a little bit unstable because that air cools, condenses and causes a bit of stormy activity at times. How do I know I'm looking at a low? Well, again, I'm going to see concentric rings. They're a bit closely, more closely spaced than they are in a high. And again, the main way we test it is if towards the centre, the values decrease in value, particularly if they go below 1,010 and lower, even below 1,000, then we definitely know we're looking at a low pressure system. Often called lousy lows, because lows often bring lousy weather. So we can see that they're exactly the opposite of a high. There'll be a decrease in temperature, an increase in wind speeds, and an increased chance of rain. So really, when you see a high or a low, we should always associate these three weather conditions. If you're ever asked about weather conditions or what the weather's going to be like, I would comment on all three things for either a high or a low. The next symbol we might see is a line with some triangles pointing off it. This is called a cold front. So this is a front of a cold air mass. So if that's the front, we've got to imagine that behind it is a mass of cool air and in front of it is a mass of warm air, and air of different temperatures doesn't mix well. You don't need to remember too much for a basic test, but all we need to keep in mind is, is that that cold front moves in the direction that the arrows 
on a, a pointing and it brings the same conditions as a low, those lousy conditions, lower temperatures, increased wind speed and increased chance of rain. The last symbol that you're likely to come across is what we call a wind indicator. And the wind indicator is made up of three elements. The first one is just the location dot. That's the location where the wind speed and direction were measured. The second one, I like to call the wind direction arm. And the reason why I call it an arm is that I like to pretend I'm standing on that dot and that's my arm. And as it points away from me, I'm pointing at the name of the wind. So in this case, that arm points in this direction and that's sort of halfway between north and east. So I'd call that a northeasterly. So I imagine I'm standing on the location dot and that is my arm pointing away from the dot towards the name of the wind. At the end of the arm, we can see we've got these fingers. I call these speed fingers. So I've got a wind direction arm that points at the name of the wind and I've got wind speed fingers. So if you've got your arm pointing out and there's no fingers on the end, it's just a straight arm, that's probably going to be a very low wind speed. If you've got half a finger pointing out or one and a half to two fingers, it starts to increase with the more fingers that are on the end of the arm. So you don't need to recall that because there'll often be a key. So if it's just an arm, low wind speed, half, full, one and a half thing, fingers. So in my case, I've got a northeasterly wind because that's the direction the arm's pointing. And at the end of the arm, according to the key, I've got one and a half fingers. So the speed's about 15 to 19 kilometers per hour. So that's a very you know, quick cheats guide to how to Read a synoptic chart. Let's have a look at a couple of questions to test ourselves. Question one, what is the air pressure in Kalgoorlie? Now on my map I've labeled Kalgoorlie with a K. I can see it sits on a line. So Kalgoorlie, if I follow the line it's on around, I might eventually come to a number, 1008. Now if I left my answer like that, I might not get the marks awarded to me. So what I would do is make sure I have the unit of measurement, which we said was hectopascals, written like this. Now, if your location is not on a labeled line, let's say it was here, so that's on a line which is a blank, well, I'd just look for the pattern, 1008, blank, 1016. So I'd ask myself, well, what's the difference between 1008 and 16, which is eight, and halfway between that would be an, another four. So 1008 plus four would be 1012. If my location sits in between two lines, like this one I've just drawn, I've put it as an X. So it's not on a line, I don't know its value. So for that one, I'd probably say something like, if I was stating my answer and not estimating, it's greater than 1012, but less than 1016. If you're unsure, try and state your answer as greater than and less than. But if you're ever asked to estimate, go for your life because you could have three possible right answers. That could be 1013, 14 or 15 if you're asked to estimate. Question two, what is the weather like in Sydney and why? So I've labeled Sydney with an S. Now I can see that Sydney at the moment has widely spaced isobars, meaning that there's probably lower wind speeds. And if I look at the value of these isobars towards the center, it goes 1008, 1012 to 1016. So towards the center of this feature, they actually get higher. So that would be a high pressure system is influencing Sydney. I'll just write high PS, high pressure system. So what do I know about a high pressure system? Well, if I'm asked about the weather, there are three things I should talk about and I'm gonna write them in shorthand. It's a happy high, there's my memory tool. So what are the three characteristics of happy weather? An increase in temperature. We've got decreased wind speeds 
and a decreased chance of rain. If I didn't write about all three, I might risk not getting full marks. So I would encourage you to do all three. Last question is multiple choice. How will Hobart's weather change in the next 24 hours? So when we see that our weather is going to change, we're looking at what's currently happening, but we're not being asked to talk about what, what's happening right now. We're seeing how it's gonna change from what it is in the future, in the next 24 hours. So here's Hobart labeled with a H. At the moment, if I just look at what's happening over Hobart right now, it, like Sydney, is sort of being influenced by this high pressure system. But to find out what it's going to be influenced in the next 24 hours by, I might look to the west because the general pattern that we see is that weather features tend to move from west to east. And in this case, we've got this symbol here called the cold front. And behind it, we've got a low. And if we look at it carefully, the arrows on the cold front are pointing right towards Hobart. So what I would expect to see is that as the cold front and low move east towards Hobart, they're gonna bring the lousy conditions that we'd associate with both the cold front and the low. So remember the lousy conditions, they're the opposite of the high, a decrease in temperature, increase in wind speed, and an increased chance of rain. So let's see if either of these two options link to that. So A says decrease temperature, that's a lousy thing, and a higher chance of rain. Sounds good. But let's just double check B to make sure it's not a better answer. Will a lousy low on a cold front bring an increase in temperatures? It'll get warmer. That doesn't sound right to me. And an increased wind speed. Well, yeah, actually, that does sound right. Which one of these is the most correct answer? I would go with option A. And that's it.